my very first motorbike tour was to the Golden Triangle, which is where Lao, Myanmar, and Thailand meet. It was a very, very interesting experience because for those that don't know, the Golden Triangle is notorious for one thing, and that's producing. And it was basically controlled by mafia, and it was like a lawless zone. And this video popped up a few days ago. It's from Bloomberg. How one man rules Asian's golden triangle. I haven't seen the video, but I do know a lot about this region. I've personally been there. So, um, yeah. Let's check it out. The Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone is a enormous center for criminal activity of all kinds. Drug trafficking, human trafficking, and scam operations. Victims have been mostly deceived by online ads promising career opportunities abroad with good pay. They keep my passport when I arrive in the lost land. After that, they teach me how to become a scammer. I work here. This These days, the Golden Triangle has actually changed a lot. Where in the 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s, the main product of the Golden Triangle was opiates these days it's a very very strange place there's like special economic zones that are put in place that are built and funded by like these like chinese like mafia members where they have these buildings and they have all these casinos and there's a lot of human trafficking going on there's a lot of um the reason they traffic these people is to set them up in call centers and the purpose of the call centers is to scam people it's an insane thing that this exists, like, in public, completely open. There's huge buildings that all these people in these buildings have basically been kidnapped. And they're held hostage, scamming people from all around the world. And because it's so corrupt, they just allow it to happen. And it's wild. Like, there, I've seen YouTube videos where people make their way into these special economic zones. Everyone speaks Chinese. They, everything operates, operates off Chinese currency. It is a wild place. And probably not a place that you really want to go around asking a bunch of questions. Yeah. Building. It's One interesting. man allegedly controls this transnational crime hub. Chinese national Zhao Wei. Zhao Wei is in charge. He sets the rules. And Chinese organized crime groups have become some of the most powerful criminal networks, both in Southeast Asia and beyond. Laos is a communist country with close ties to the Chinese Communist Party. So China has dramatically more influence in Laos than, say, the United States. The big question here is whether China eventually decides they want to put a stop to this or not. One of the mysteries here is China's attitude to Zhao Wei. When I was doing my Golden Triangle motorbike tour series, I would see multiple uh, multiple Rolls Royce, Bentleys with uh, Lao plates, right? And they'd be driving over the border into Thailand constantly. I'm on a little 150cc motorbike in the middle of nowhere, and I look, and I'm like, oh, there's a Bentley, randomly, like driving down a dirt road with a Lao plate on it. And it's like, what is this doing here? Like, who is this, right? They seem to be overall somewhat tolerant of him. So who is Zhao Wei and why is an alleged crime boss allowed to run this place like his personal kingdom? Golden Triangle's changed a lot, man. I mean, I'm sure there's still drug manufacturing going on. So we're here but... near the Burmese border in far northern Thailand following a unit of the Thai army who are patrolling these woods as they do frequently looking for drug traffickers. So he said this was the Thai army. The Thai army, they find large volumes of drugs coming over the border just about every week, particularly methamphetamines. What we were just talking about earlier, somebody said something about Thai people putting methamphetamines in 
uh, sang some. So what they're going to be talking about here mostly is they're going to be talking about Yaba. The Golden Triangle, what it became infamous for was heroin production. Um, but these days, I think it's mostly methamphetamine production, Yaba pills, and then also the scam centers, as the scam call centers as well. In the videos that we received from the Thai military, we can see army officers trying to secure the northern border of Thailand that it shares with Laos and Myanmar. Sometimes during these patrols, they will have to confront with uh, drug traffickers. A record 169 tons of methamphetamines was seized in Southeast Asia last year. 82% of that came from the three countries that make up the Golden Triangle, Myanmar, Laos, and Thailand. And at the very heart of it lies the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone, also known as the GTSEZ. Meth trafficking has exploded across the region in recent years. It's commonly packaged in tea packets, with the GTSEZ in Laos acting as a perfect location for storage and distribution. There's been, over the years, over the past couple years, I've lost track of how many times that, like, massive, massive, like, world record-breaking sizes of, like, shipments of meth that have been, like, intercepted going into Australia that all originated from the Golden Triangle area. If you do want to get large quantities of drugs out of Southeast Asia, you do often have to go through Thailand. It is the most internationally connected of the countries in mainland Southeast Asia. The Thai government over the years has tried to stop drug shipments coming over Thailand's borders, particularly with Myanmar and Laos. But you know, corruption is a thing. See what he's saying here? 121 uh, million, 121 million meth tablets. So that's how they manufacture meth here is they, they manufacture it into tablets, not like powder. <laughs> The self-governing GTSEZ was founded by Zhao Wei, who's been called out by U.S. authorities for his alleged involvement in trafficking drugs from Myanmar. <laughs> JM, correct. <laughs> These criminal groups have focused on a full range of criminal markets. That includes narcotics, it includes precursor chemicals, it includes human trafficking, as well as online scamming. Crypto slaves are spent working around the clock sending these spam text messages to you. And it turns out the messages are mainly sent by people in Southeast Asia who are themselves victims of human trafficking. We have very clear public statements from law enforcement bodies, including the United States Treasury Department, which enforces sanctions, saying very emphatically that what is going on here is not legal. What we saw, and what indeed the Thai military are able to do, is really a relatively small effort in the context What's of up, the overall Jeff? drug trade. At the center of the GTSEZ is the King's Romans Casino. These casinos play an important role in capital flight and illicit financial transfers. They are, of course... If you don't know, gambling is illegal in Thailand, so there's no casinos in Thailand. Now, they have been talking about opening a casino in in Pattaya, but I don't know if they're actually going to do it or not. My opinion is probably these casinos are just money laundering, basically. That is me at the Golden Triangle. So right behind me is the Mekong River. And that is where Thailand, Myanmar, and Laos meet.
reporting to tons of different law enforcement agencies, critical nodes for how uh, criminal organizations launder the proceeds of illegal activities into the legitimate financial system. A lot of the drug money gets laundered through the casinos, and some argue that that I is swear I haven't one of the watched key this. reasons as to why the zone was established in the first place. This is something that the UN Office on Drugs and Crime has documented over the years in quite some detail. But Zhao Wei denies any involvement with the drug business. Xiao Wei very much leans into the image and the role of a venerated leader in the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone. On the YouTube channels that are associated with the zone, we see videos of Xiao inaugurating a very lavish ceremony of the Bokyo International Airport being opened. And we see him rubbing shoulders with senior Laos government officials. In 2007, he reached a deal with the Lao government to create the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone. He was given a 99-year lease on about 39 square miles of territory. And the Damn. terms of the deal essentially put him in charge of this patch of the country. Did you guys hear that? So this Chinese guy got a 99-year lease. Ostensibly, it is a legitimate tourism and commercial project designed to bring development to this poor part of Laos. His companies publish these very glossy brochures for prospective investors in the GTSEZ. It's like looking at the annual report of a Fortune 500 company. Zhao Wei is from northern China originally. He spent a significant amount of time in the late 90s, early 2000s, first in Macau and then in northern Myanmar. And his main focus there was the casino business, later pivoting to align quite closely with an ethnic armed organization in northern Myanmar known as the National Democratic Alliance Army or the Meng La Army. It's no coincidence that many of the labor, the security forces inside of the zone also come from northern Myanmar. Something happened that really gave Zhao Wei a clear path to dominating this region. The Mekong murders were attacks in 2011 on two Chinese cargo vessels in the Mekong. 13 sailors were killed. There was this huge what? manhunt supported by China in the Golden Triangle, which led ultimately to the arrest of a warlord, a local strongman named Na Kam. He was extradited to China and ultimately executed. The elimination of Na Kam kind of sets that way up for enormous success that he's been able to achieve since. In his telling, he is a legitimate businessman who, if anything, has been driving drug trafficking out of the Golden Triangle. You know, I don't know this guy, but you would probably think he wants the drug trafficking and drug manufacturing to actually leave the Golden Triangle because that's what that area is notorious for. And basically it brings heat on that area and it brings heat on him. And, you know, what's going on with the casinos and the money laundering and, you know, the, uh, you know, the human trafficking and the call, the scam call centers, like all of that can be ran low key if people would stop, you know, trafficking meth and heroin. So... But the, but also on the flip side of that, he's obviously like what they call the big boss of this region. If he really wanted to stop it, he could stop it. In a 2023 interview with Thai media, he said the zone does not allow drug trafficking, human trafficking, and scam operations. He said the U.S. sanctions against him are a geopolitical issue.
But when you do speak to law enforcement officials who've investigated the GTSEZ and Zhao Wei, they just find these denials laughable. Of course. In the view of law enforcement officials, the illegal activity absolutely continue and, and absolutely remain at the core of the enterprise. It's the exact same thing as the Patia police. Bro, it was just on the news like a couple months ago with the Patia police went to Walking Street and they walked down Walking Street and then they made this big whole thing all over the news that we were on Walking Street and we went and inspected all the businesses and there's no prostitution on Walking Street because prostitution is illegal in Thailand. And people went, yeah, right, dude. There's no prostitution on Walking Street? Okay, sure, buddy. If that's what you need to say, to save face, then go for it. This is the exact same thing. I spoke to an Indonesian woman who we we're going to call CT to protect her identity. And she had a story of being trafficked into the SEZ. So she saw a job ad on Facebook. She was promised a role working in graphics for computer games. They pay for everything until I arrive in Laos. And after that, everything changed. Shortly after she arrived, her passport was taken away. Mm. She was in a building that was locked. You couldn't leave without a special access card. And her job was to hang out on dating apps, Tinder, Badu, things like that, befriend lonely American men, get them to trust her. Around the pandemic, there started to be reports of the emergence of these scam centers. It wasn't just in the GTSEZ. There are a few other places around Asia that became known as scamming hubs. There's a lot in uh, Chinookville, Cambodia. We identified Cambodia. 64 billion US dollars per year were stolen by these Chinese origin criminal syndicates operating both in Southeast Asia as well as elsewhere around the world. You now have hundreds of industrial scale compounds where people are engaged in very elaborate and sophisticated forms of online scamming that we would refer to as pig butchering scams. The scammer builds a relationship of trust with the victim. I need to have sad story for me, the guy in online chatting. The perpetrator then tricks the individual into downloading some type of a cryptocurrency trading app, which is completely under the control of the scam syndicate. They have the application to give you profit, like 1,000, 2,000. Then after that, you put more, 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 until you put all of your money. Once the perpetrator senses that the victim has really put everything in that they have, we catch they'll go in and slaughter the victims. And this is why it's called pig butchering. Oh. 100,000 more is not on us hand anymore. It's on the boss. I've seen some videos and photographs of the wild, inside bro. of these scam centers. And the thing is, especially during COVID, when there was a bunch of dudes that were just like stuck in the US, UK, Australia, whatever, and uh, they were stuck there and they were lonely and they just wanted to talk to girls. Man, so many people got scammed by this stuff just because they were just, they were so desperate just to talk to like a girl that they got roped into this stuff and they got scammed out of life savings because they were thinking with the wrong head. They were thinking with their little head and not their big head. They look like totally normal offices. This is a white-collar technology industry with a few important differences. One is that most of the workers are effectively prisoners. Another is that if you fail to hit your targets, you might be beaten up or you might be locked in a room without food for a week, which is what happened to two people we spoke to for this story. This is wild, bro. The Thai locals we spoke to seem to have mixed feelings about the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone. They can go there for legal gambling, which is not something that they can do in Thailand. What law enforcement, whether... So what they were saying is the main reason people go to this economic zone is the fact that gambling is legal there. And basically what, that, what the casinos are... I mean, that's basically the cover for all the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes, basically. Whether in the U.S. or Thailand or, or anywhere else, keep running into is the sovereignty problem. 
the basic rule of international relations is the FBI or the DEA or the Thai police or the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime cannot do anything in a country that doesn't want them doing it. The most evident example of Lao government's support for Xiaowe is the fact that they hold a 20% stake in the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone. There is one oh. country that almost certainly could do a great deal to change how things happen in the GTSEZ, and that's China. Laos is effectively a Chinese client state. There are huge amounts of development assistance that come from China every year. This is an area that China views as strategic. And if criminal actors can be useful in those pursuits, China is perfectly willing to at least turn a blind eye to their activities, if not in some cases partner with them. But that doesn't mean that if the tide shifts or China views its interests as changing, it won't turn on that way. So for now, this place is going to continue to expand. And from the perspective of law enforcement in Asia and beyond, it will continue to be a very big problem. Thousands of trafficked victims still remain trapped with no rescue in sight. As for Sidi, her nightmare is far from over. I'm still scary uh, because last year, so my friends say like they keep looking for me. Yeah, sure, right, buddy. So here's the thing, just because they ban something, just because something is illegal, doesn't mean that it's going to be enforced. You know, again, again, you know, prostitution is illegal in Thailand. So is speeding. Like, you can't drive past the speed limit in Thailand. And, uh, yeah, people every single day drive way past the speed limit, including me, because it's not enforced. You know what I'm saying? This is fascinating, man. This really is fascinating. This is such an interesting uh, area of the world.